Now to the continuing HIH scandal. And the company's founder and former boss, Ray Williams, today revealed that he has voluntarily surrendered his passport to the Australian Securities and Investments Commission. Mr Williams says he acted to dismiss offensive suggestions that he might leave the country. He's pledged to cooperate with any inquiry. Well, it turns out HIH policyholders and shareholders are not the only ones wanting answers from Mr Williams. At Christmas time we were given a hamper by the Williamses and um, yeah, they're wishing the McCaw family, um, wishing you all the best for Christmas and New Year. Thanks for all your hard work and loyalty. Love the Williams family. Kevin McGaw got a hamper. In return, he gave the Williams family free electrical work, albeit unintentionally. Because you purchased that and then you expect to be reimbursed by the client. Oh, that's exactly right. As I had been for the previous two years. That, that had been in the normal working manner. Um, I purchased, invoiced, paid. I actually um, installed some inflow heating into the bathroom areas. Um, uh, it's quite expensive product. Um, and yeah, it was, that was some of the stuff I wasn't actually purchased, uh, that I'd purchased that I wasn't paid for. But you won't find this Newcastle electrician's name on the seemingly never-ending list of creditors owed money by HIH. You see, his debt is personally owed by none other than the insurance company's boss. Kevin hasn't been paid for his work at this 26-hectare holiday home since Ray Williams resigned as head of HIH in December last year. How much in total are these invoices worth? Uh, around $15,800, thereabouts, including GST. Uh, yeah, there's troffers and light fittings and so forth that were purchased. Uh, uh, there was repairs and checking of air conditioning systems on the property as well. Uh, there was wiring for air conditioning. The majority of the works are complete and were done over the past two years. But these people are getting, these builders around you now are getting paid. Last night on A Current Affair, Ray Williams' son Craig, who happens to be supervising his father's renovations, assured us all the tradesmen here had been paid. Yeah, of course those workers have been paid, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was tough. You know, I lost a lot of time in that time too, which was unproductive. So, yeah, it's uh, all up. It means you weren't working for anything. There was no income. So, yeah, it wasn't a nice feeling and it doesn't feel nice. We've also spoken to two other contractors chasing the Williams family for money. A renderer who's been owed $40,000 since last year was paid just yesterday following a series of stories about this development and a builder who's been waiting 10 months for his $85,000 was told he'd be paid tomorrow morning as long as he agreed not to talk to a current affair. I know there's been other trades that have had problems. Um, there's been other excuses given. Um, workmanship, um, everything else. Uh, that's not been an, an issue for me, workmanship. Um, so why haven't you been paid? Uh, can't honestly answer that. I really can't answer that. While work continues on the $5 million waterfront property, its owner, Ray Williams, flew into Melbourne today. Uh, I really have no further comments to make at this stage. Thank you. Sorry, though, about the thousands of people who have actually lost. I prefer to not make any further comments at this stage. Nothing to say to HIH policyholders nor its shareholders, despite mounting questions surrounding the collapse. Well, it makes me makes me feel very angry that I've um, I've I've got money outstanding, and I see. I mean, it's insignificant. The money I've got is insignificant to what I've seen spent there. Insignificant um, to them, not insignificant no, to you. True, that's true. I'm, I'm probably just as upset as anybody else. Uh, taxpayers having to pay um, bailing out you know, corporate Australia um, sort of leaves a bit of taste, especially when you're already owed money personally. Do you have any guilt at all about what's happened? Just an apology, even. Might help some of the people who have been affected by this. But later, in a written statement released to A Current Affair, Ray Williams speaks of his sympathy and regret for the HIH victims. One part of his note may help explain why he hasn't been able to pay some of his tradesmen. We still hold 7 million shares, which were worth more than $24 million at their peak, and which today may be worthless. And how do you get rewarded for that hard work and loyalty? No, you don't get paid. <laughs> so, yeah, it was a, that was quite disappointing. So they obviously... Happy with your work? Well, yes, and my loyalty <laughs> and my hard work, yes. 
but um, obviously something's not right. Mm. Um, but I'm failing to understand it. Is that, you're sorry for him at all, sir? It doesn't seem like he's done a terribly good job for a man that was on um, such high wages. Um, I guess uh, if I was on similar wages, um, I, a lot of people would be expecting a lot more of me, I guess. First, though, victims of the HIH collapse having their say on the advertised sale of the multi-million dollar Harborside mansion owned by the wife of former HIH boss, Ray Williams. And our coverage of this issue has become a story in itself, with Mrs Rita Williams employing a public relations company to accuse a current affair of a gross invasion of her family's privacy. Well, we reject that. The fact is, the Williams property is, and was, when we filmed it last week, a vacant building. But quite clearly, it is also a financial asset, ready for sale. It's the devastation, it's the immediate realisation that it's all been for nothing, you've done it all mm. for nothing. This is the worst situation <clears throat> my wife has been in, in the whole 49 years of our life. Just a handful of the tens of thousands of Australians still coming to terms with HIH turning their lives upside down. And now having to cope with another slap in the face. HIH's failed boss, Ray Williams, has just listed his family home for sale. Asking price? Seven million dollars. Just leaves me speechless to see that people can be living like this and treating other people the way they've done. You know, the contrast between what we're seeing now to all of our situations and no doubt lots of other people around the country situations, it's that that really, you know, sticks in your stomach. Alan and Nao Morris from Melbourne are $300,000 out of pocket after their HIH insured transporter who was relocating their house went broke leaving them and their children with no home. This is the ducting for the heating and that was meant to go back to the roof. Peter Reddy had a mining accident five years ago and hasn't worked since. His HIH income insurance was supposed to support him, but he hasn't been paid for three months. Lynette and Wayne Morgan face losing their caravan park here in Cairns because their HIH accident insurance is no more. And now they're being sued for a million dollars by someone who fell and injured themselves. Nice folding, sliding, mirrored. Retirees Gladys and Alfred Spittle are down $130,000 after their HIH insured builder went bust. Now they're living in this shack next to their half built home. Black like cup of tea? Half yeah, the I'll have coffee. Please. Since we moved into the shed, the shack, we have been sitting on fold up garden chairs all of that time because there's insufficient room to put proper chairs in. That's no problem here at Ray Williams' house, perched on a cliff top high above Balmoral Beach. Prime real estate at the gateway to Sydney Harbour. The $7 million home is in his wife Rita's name, and therefore not part of his assets, which were frozen last week. He should immediately denounce the protection of his wife as property owner on that particular home. He's hiding behind her. Acting as prospective buyers, a current affair was taken on a guided tour by the real estate agent through the six-bedroom, four-bathroom, double-kitchen mansion. You're now walking into the formal lounge room. Anyone have a lounge room like that at all, with those views? <laughs> Certainly no not. Definitely not. We haven't even got plaster on the walls. The house that Lynnie and I live in on the park, uh, the whole total of it isn't as big as that one room. Then, apart from the formal dining room, there's the main state-of-the-art gourmet kitchen. Anyone have a kitchen like that? No, no. <laughs> we have a kitchen that's been built, or virtually built, since March 2000. Still in the builder's place. We've never even seen the bloody thing. <laughs> Excuse me. So I've got a sink and uh, a cupboard for a kitchen, and uh, it's also in my lounge room as well. For 18 months, I was washing up in a plastic bowl on a bench because we had no proper sink. Now this is the main bedroom with electronic curtains. <laughs> <laughs> There's the king-size bed, as you can see. 
and there's the view from the master bedroom. We, our bedroom is the bedroom, sitting room, kitchen, bathroom. Does anyone here have two lounge rooms? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> One would be nice. <laughs> Okay. Now all we've got is uncertainty and debt. That's all we've That's got. That's right. On the bottom level, there's a second and more informal lounge room, complete with widescreen TV and another dining area. There's also a complete second kitchen. One would be nice. We don't have anything. We have nothing. And just outside is Williams' spectacular entertaining area, with pool, spa and manicured gardens even its own teppanyaki bar. Peter, you're living in an aged and, and disabled centre. Any teppanyaki bars there? No, nothing. Nothing like that. How does it make you feel when you see that? Disgusted. It's appalling what he's got. It's for what he's done to us, you know. He's taken our lives, our destinies. Yep. <laughs> Had it. They hold that, mate. They've stuffed it in a, in a box. And they dangle it in front of us. And you're only 39 years of age? Yep, 39 years of age. I've got a hell of a lot longer to go. And I owe my destiny. Well, when, we, when we all heard about the crash, I think we all jumped to the conclusion that there was a certain level of incompetence in the company, and oh, this yeah. was the reason why it happened. Now we see things like this, you just wonder whether there was incompetence or whether there should be other questions asked. By all accounts, to be fair, Ray Williams is a decent and generous man. What do you say? So let's see some of their generosity and decency. And should do what? We should help the people out that are down and out now because of the downfall of HIH. And we should point out that the Williams property is not the only one to hit the market since the HIH collapse. Here in Melbourne, a luxury three-bedroom apartment owned by the former HIH director George Storsteps was sold last week for more than $2.2 million. It's part of this prime location in Clarendon Street. Mr Storesteps said he sold that property because he had suffered, quote, significant losses in the HIH collapse, losses in the millions, unquote.